this video we're going to talk about what atoms look like. You may have seen a picture of an atom that looks similar to the one I have here, where we have some stuff there in the middle that's usually called the nucleus, and then we have these electrons around the outside that are kind of buzzing around these lines here. Now, nobody has ever seen an atom. They're just too small. We couldn't even see an atom with a microscope, not even a very powerful microscope. Normal microscopes, like this one I have here, are going to magnify the light that bounces off of an object. It'll pass through these lenses and into this eyepiece and into our eye. We can visualize a beam of light as billions of these tiny light particles that would bounce and hit off an object, and we would actually detect these little tiny particles with our eye and our brain will turn that information into a picture. Now we call these little tiny light particles photons. And these photons kind of work in the same way that uh, one of these pin toys work. If you've ever seen one of these before, it's all these little tiny pins and you can put your hand in it or your face in it even and come up with an image. Now, atoms are so small, it'd be almost like our pin toy was just one giant pin. Uh, you know, maybe right in the center here. We just had this one big pin here. And so it really wouldn't work to visualize anything. Here's another way to look at it. Uh, imagine you had a coloring book, and you're going to color this page, and you didn't have any crayons. All you had was this really big paintbrush. And so as you try to start coloring in this painting, uh, you would have a very tough time picking out any detail because you would probably just paint over the entire picture. So if we can't see an atom and we can't even use a microscope to see it, how do we know what it looks like? Well, we use evidence from experiments. For example, we can, can't really see the wind, but we know the wind is there because we can see the leaves blowing around. That's kind of the idea with atoms. We can see some evidence of uh, what it's going to look like. Now there is a pretty cool kind of microscope called a scanning tunneling microscope. And this microscope does not use light to visualize things. Instead it uses electricity. It has this arm with a point attached to it, uh, like this right here, and that point is going to be so small that it's actually going to be about the size or even smaller than an atom. And when this point comes in contact with an atom, this would represent some substance here. Each of these green particles would be an atom. Um, it's going to detect the electric charge of that atom. These charges come from the electrons and protons. And this scanning tunneling microscope, it can't really see the atoms, um, but it can tell how big the atoms are and also how they're arranged. Um, this is what graphite actually looked like. And you can see all these bumps here would be a carbon atom. And so this is how those carbon atoms would be arranged in graphite, and this is all thanks to the scanning tunneling microscope. Now there's been many other experiments and a lot of great scientists have done work to visualize or give a better picture of the atom. Uh, we have scientists like Niles Bohr and Ernest Rutherford and J.J. Thompson, and the idea of an atom it was originally thought to look like just a hard dense sphere, but we now know that the atom is made up of a nucleus that contains uh, the protons and neutrons. And so I have these two protons and neutrons. They're the same size, uh, and protons have a positive charge, and neutrons have uh, no charge at all. Now there's these extremely small electrons buzzing around the outside of the nucleus. And the electrons are actually moving so quickly that we can't even really see them. We can't even know where they are. And so it almost just looks like a cloud that's kind of surrounding the nucleus here. Now compared to the nucleus, this cloud would actually be absolutely massive. And it's not representing the size of the electrons. Again, the electrons are just a very, very tiny particle, much smaller than the protons and electrons. And we might have this single dot here kind of buzzing around all over the place. And so we can't see the electrons. They're just moving around there somewhere. Now the example we saw at the beginning of the video here those lines are kind of representing that buzzing electron. And so this model isn't a bad way to represent the atom. It just probably looks a little bit more like this. Now one other thing, the cloud here of electrons isn't necess necessarily uh, spherical in shape. Um, it could be many different shapes, but it's just representing that random motion of electrons. And so that's kind of an idea of what the atom looks like. 